These two animals give less f**ks than an incel, so what would happen if they got into a fight? Well, honey badgers and wolverines are both mustelids, but the wolverine is a weasel on steroids. They're bigger and stronger, and even though wolverines could hunt from themselves, they'd rather steal from much larger animals. Even though they're only 50 pounds, wolverines will straight up punk bears and cougars out of food just off intimidation. As a scavenger, wolverines have life-canceling jaws, and they even have a special set of molars that's rotated 90 degrees, meaning they can crack and crush bones, and which is why the skunk bear eats every part of its victim, including the teeth. And we have to acknowledge the fact that a wolverine body bagged a polar bear by clamping its jaws around its neck until it's suffocated. Wolverines are basically every pit bull stereotype on steroids. Honey badgers are smaller, but their balls are the same size, if not bigger. At only 30 pounds, these felony ferrets will hoodcheck lions, hyenas, and leopards, and they win fights off a of pure crackhead determination. Their skin is even tougher than that of a wolverine's because they can survive being shanked by an African porcupine. American porcupines are smaller, but even they've been known to put wolverines in the dirt. Not only does a honey badger have tough skin, it's loose, meaning they can flip over after being bitten and still attack. Also, honey badgers are way smarter than wolverines and even able to use tools. Now, here's the important part. Wolverines are more muscular with a much more crushing bite. And despite their vicious reputation, wolverines aren't extremely skilled fighters. Their main defense is intimidation, which to be fair, they're very good at. But you are not intimidating this black air force with attitude. Honey badgers are 100% on smoke. Not only will they fight till they flatline, they'll go at it for hours. Meaning the only way for the wolverine to win is to kill an animal that basically runs on Duracell. Wolverines like to go for the throat, but a honey badger struggling with its tough skin can make it nearly impossible to land a critical hit. Also, honey badgers go for the balls, and they've been known to KO animals as brolic as buffalo. So who would win? Honey badgers don't have the tools to kill a wolverine by strictly biting, but in a fight lasting hours, this cycle weasel could tire out the bigger animal and force it to retreat. A lot of the wolverine's attitude is a bluff, they won't keep fighting if they feel like their life's in danger. Honey badgers will 100% die for the cause, and the same way they can run off lions and hyenas, they can probably drive off even a motivated wolverine. He doesn't have to kill the wolverine to win. The honey badger would be the last one standing. Oats can climb trees, and not enough people know this. This isn't Photoshop because even though they wear the animal equivalent of high heels, they have a habit of giving gravity the middle finger. Goats can scale trees, cliffs, and if you test them with a fence, they'll sh all over your work. In life, people are going to try to bring you down and keep you from succeeding. Be a goat and never fold. Also, goats aren't just cute barnyard animals. Some of them are built like refrigerators with horns. They can weigh over 300 pounds, and some mountain goats will actively starve beef with any hikers they see under a mountain. You do not want those problems. And then you have the Markor, a goat that looks straight from the Shadow Realm with a power tool for a head, test his hood, and he'll send you there. This Narnia goat is the national animal of Pakistan, and they allegedly run faith with snakes and win on the regular. And of course you got the Alpine Ibex who routinely tells gravity to f**k off because they've been seen vertically climbing up dams like Spider Goat. You're probably wondering how they're able to do this with no paws, claws, or thumbs. I really don't know. And yes, even though this is a bighorn sheep, they're still in the Kaepernick goat subfamily, meaning I can talk about them. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to play in the NFL, start beef with a bighorn, he'll inflict 10 seasons of abuse on your head. Nature gave goats way too much power and they got disrespectful with it. If I can't make you appreciate bees in 60 seconds, feel free to unfollow me. They evolved to communicate by dancing. If one finds food, they can tell the other hive members what direction and how far away it is by the direction and angle of their waggle dances. Yes, that's actually what it's called, Dan Pavemeyer was not f***ing around. They even use dancing to vote. If the hive gets too full, the bees will form a senate and scalp bees will go out and look for new places to live and then report back to the hive and dance to tell the other bees where the new spot's at. Basically, these real estate bees will present the hive with new possible homes and the bees will vote by dancing until they reach a consensus. Bees are smart enough to be trained to sniff out and locate bombs ranging from dynamite to C4 plastic explosives and they're really good at it. If bees get caught outside when it's too cold, they'll find a nice flower to sleep in until it gets warm enough for them to make it back home. Bees will make this sound when they're startled they bump into another bee that's the equivalent of a whoops or a my bad. These whoops can be used to measure the overall mental health of the hive. More whoops means more stress. It'd be like that. Bees will seek out fermented tree sap and basically get drunk off it, but when these turned bees try to enter the hive, they get attacked and kicked out by the sober bees. Drunk bees are more likely to get into flying accidents, so the sober bees enforce zero tolerance. Texas screech owls will adopt little blind snakes and then keep them as roommates in their nest. Normally, owls take their prey's life before they bring it home to their chicks, but not only does the owl spare the snake, it carries it gently enough that it doesn't get injured, and the snake burrows itself in the owl's nest. That's because the owls use the little blind snakes as housekeepers, since they eat ants, termites, and larvae that can become parasites for the owl's family of chicks. So the little blind snake protects the owl's kids from insects, and in exchange, the owl gives him a rent-free home safe from animals that might try to eat him. And this works out pretty well because baby owls with snakes for roommates actually grew up faster and had a better chance of survival, just as long as they didn't eat it. And if this sounds familiar, tarantulas do the exact same thing because they'll adopt tiny dotted humming frogs as pets because they eat the insects that would normally eat the spider's eggs. And in exchange, the bite-sized frog gets an eight-legged hairy bodyguard in a jungle full of ops. And that is as wholesome as spiders get. Hey yo, where the f did sea lions come from? Well, sea lions are carnivores, meaning they belong to the carnivora family, which is right here. Bear with me, I'm about to get in my bag real quick. 
Sea lions are part of the pinniped group right there, which means they had a common ancestor with the Mustelio Day group. A group that includes raccoons, red pandas, wolverines, and badgers. Which means sea lions are actually closer to trash pandas than they are to actual lions, but that's not enough, we gotta go deeper. Seals and sea lions evolved from a land version that was basically an otter on steroids with jaws like a bear. Which makes sense because the sea lion family and the raccoon, badger, red panda squad share a common grandfather with the Ursidae family. And if you've been paying attention, you know that Ursidae is the bear family. I'm talking about polar bears, grizzlies, all that stuff. Which means sea lions are basically grizzlies with better skin care and a better breast stroke. In fact, if you put a sea lion's skull next to a bear's, you can barely tell the difference. Moral of this video, sea lions are actually sea bears. When Squidward got his squid cheeks clapped by this guy, he was really getting his mixed by a sea lion. Animals that you might think are good pets, but are actually pure hell. Owning a sugar glider is like adopting an ice sculpture in August. They're just as durable and they last just as long. They're ridiculously sensitive, high maintenance, and they find some of the most creative ways to die. They glide into walls, they choke to death on raisins, and if they're stressed in any way, they'll hand a baker themselves. They can get clapped by a disease you've never even heard of, and on top of all that, they bite. Unless you're a professional adopting a sugar glider, just putting heartbreak on layaway. Toucans are terrible pets, and before you say it, everything I'm about to tell you, Tuki's owner told me. Toucans are needy. They scream and they bite whenever they don't get their way or when they just feel like it. Since their beak is serrated, this is what they can do to you. They're highly aggressive hormonal assholes that can't be trusted with children or other people. Also, they shit 40 to 50 times a day, not the white yogurt pigeon stuff either. They'll have your house looking like a paintball bunker. And I don't know what this is, but I hate it. There's a lot of other things, but long story short, unless you're professional, which Tuki's mom is, adopting a toucan is inviting Satan and Featherface into your home. And last are foxes because they are the worst roommates. They scream at 3am and they pee all over the place, and I would forgive that if the smell didn't stick to you for weeks. It'll put your social life on life support if it doesn't just kill it completely. Here's some facts about Mort from Madagascar. People confuse him for the venomous slow lords, but he's actually a mouse lemur. Even though they weigh less than 2 ounces and can fit on your hand, the big eyes and the fact that they're only active at night freak people out so much they thought they were spirits of dead people that were never buried, which is why the word lemur actually means ghost. But as the smallest primate in the world, the mouse lemur is perfectly harmless and only a menace to the fruits, flowers, and insects they eat. They also have the smallest brain at 2 grams, which is why more acted like a toddler even though he was like 50 years old. Not even kidding, he was a baby-faced geriatric. But what the mouse lemur does have are big balls, because during breeding season, his baby-making factory will swell to up to 130% of their normal size. Because in mouse lemur society, the bigger the balls, the more you score. There's 24 different kinds of mouse lemurs, and the one I would give my life for the fastest is the Madame Burst lemur, for the very complex fact that they just happen to be the smallest. Even though it looks like an anime squirrel, the mouse lemur is a primate making it related to you and me, and we share more than 95% of our DNA with it. And because I know y'all are gonna ask, they're horrible pets because they might be tame when they're young, but when they hit puberty, just like teenagers, they become assholes, and these assholes bite. And scratch too. They're also very high maintenance and in danger. More specifically, it's a good men's mouse lemur, and the only fact I have is that the females bully and beat the males in the name of equality. Strongest animal in the world might just surprise you. It might surprise you because it's none of these animals here. In a world of tigers, elephants, and walking biceps with horns, heaviest lifter of all is actually the beetle. The rhinoceros beetle can lift 800 times its own weight. That would be me bench pressing a tank. The reason this Darth Vader bug is such a powerhouse is ironically because it's so small. With less weight to carry around, it could dedicate more muscles to purely lifting. This beetle has a compact system, meaning it can fit more muscles in its body, and it has a tough exoskeleton that can handle weight better. Having an exoskeleton means its muscles are inside its skeleton, making this beetle stronger than King Kong's paw armor, but fun fact, it's not even the strongest beetle. That title belongs to the dung beetle, since they can lift 1,141 times their own weight, and if a person did that, they'd be lifting six double-decker buses with people in it. And since we're bigger and we don't have an exoskeleton, we will never be stronger than this beetle, but with Fitness Coach, you can be stronger than you were yesterday. Because it lets you choose your workout intensity, how often you want to work out, and what exactly you want to work out. If you want to get right for the summer, it's going to be the top one right there. But respectfully, neither you or Goku are touching this beetle. It may eat, but they don't take shit. Florida has a herpes monkey problem that nobody knows what to do about. It's because six Reese's monkeys were brought to Florida in the 1930s and put on an island, but a uh, funny story. They didn't know that monkeys could swim. The monkeys swam across the river into the mainland, and after lots of nasty monkey sex, there are now nearly 600 Reese's macaques in the state of Florida, and a lot of them carry herpes. About 25% of these STD jockeys have it, and they shed the virus from their mouth by drooling, so if one bites you, you're every kind of Matter of fact, if they just scratch you, it could be credits. And in a few cases, people that caught herpes from these monkeys suffered permanent brain damage. There's also the fact that they're eating the bird population into a pack to the point where they can completely wipe them out if they're not slowed down. But now the problem is removing all the monkeys would be difficult, expensive, and nobody really wants to adopt a monkey with herpes. But if they murk them all, people would obviously be upset and PETA might actually nuke us. But if we do nothing and let the monkeys rock, it'll be World War Z with more fleas and herpes. Because Florida is the only state where onion articles find a pulse and come to life. If you can guess every animal based on its eyes, I will personally give you a cookie. This guy has W-shaped pupils because it bounces out uneven light levels where they live and helps it see better. These eyes that look like they were drawn by a first grader actually change in size and shape to give it a better view of the ocean. Yup, I said ocean because that is a cuttlefish. Now this dude has horizontal pupils to help keep an eye out for enemies while also making it look possessed by the devil. Its eyes look like that so that when it bends down to eat grass, the pupils stay aligned with the ground, giving it a better view so it doesn't get put in a pack while eating grass. Just another reason why goats are too powerful. Now this animal actually has 12,000 eyes. 
Kind of. They have two big eyes like everyone else, but each eye is made of thousands of compound eyes, meaning it can see in almost every direction at the same time. Its brain collects all these images and puts it into one picture, and this is how butterflies see the world. And that is why Spongebob nearly burnt a city to the ground. Now, this is probably the weirdest one of all, but these eyes can actually see forms of light that are invisible to us, like ultraviolet and polarized light. This is what life looks like for a mantis shrimp. That and the fact that they can uppercut with the force of a pistol proves that God has favorites, and this LSD shrimp is one of them.